Welcome to the Adventures in Alchemy podcast, where we share tips, techniques, and true stories to support you in using the law of attraction and alchemy to create magic and live the life of your dreams. Here's your host, the founder of DailyAlchemy.com, Michelle Martin Dobbins. Hey, this is Michelle Martin Dobbins from DailyAlchemy.com. And today I want to talk to you about focusing on what you like and noticing what you don't like. Recently, my family and I went on a trip. We were in Chicago. And when we were in Chicago, we went to an art museum. We went to the Art Institute of Chicago and we saw the Van Gogh Bedrooms exhibit. And it was wonderful. And we planned on going. My oldest daughter is a huge Van Gogh fan. And I like him quite a bit as well. But as I was going through the art museum, and we actually went through quite a few museums on this trip. We started in Chicago, took a train to New Orleans. So we saw museums in Chicago, museums in New Orleans. And it made me think about how when you're going through a museum, there will be pictures that appeal to you. There will be pictures that you feel kind of neutral about, and there will be pictures that you just probably don't like, or you don't get, or you don't understand, or you might even think they're ugly. And to me, this is a great lesson, because when you're in an art museum and you see a painting that you like, then you stop, and you focus on it, and you bask in it, and you just, you study the details, and you... Just, you know, you take your time. And for me, I'm a very feeling oriented person. So I almost feel like I can feel the vibration of the painting. I think about the painter and the emotions that they put into the painting. And, you know, I may stand there 10, 15 minutes or so, probably not as long when I have my younger children with me. But, you know, if I'm by myself and I'm in an art museum, if I love a piece, I am just going to sit there and soak up everything about it that I love. Then if I go to a piece and I'm kind of neutral on it, it doesn't really set my heart on fire. I will glance at it, look at it and move on. If there's something that I don't like, I'm going to notice someone go, you know, that doesn't really go with me. It's not really my style. It doesn't really raise my vibration. I'm not really tapped into what that artist was saying. But I'm, for the most part, I'm especially (laughs) now that I'm older and when I was younger, I might have been like, I don't get why this is even in here. I will say, you know, I maybe I'm not connecting with this person's viewpoint, but obviously they have one, there's a message, and it's serving people, but it's not serving me. So I'm going to go more than likely to the next exhibit. I mean, like if it's a hall all filled with pictures like that, I can go, hmm, yeah, I liked it. It's not my thing. And I want you to consider that life is like that. Life is like To me, all of life is art and magic and beauty, and you can see beauty in everything. But when you're going through life and you see something that you connect with that you like, then you focus on it. When you see something that's like neutral, if it's neutral, it's just still not really for you, right? Because if it doesn't bring up your passion and your joy, it's cool that it's there, but it's not really for you. But then when you see something that you find ugly, that you find disturbing, that you do not connect with at all, A, that's a good thing because you just saw something that you don't want. So you know, turn the other way, go to another exhibit. But we don't have to fight against the fact that it's there. It serves a purpose for someone And, you know, you may say, well, you know, litter or this or that or animal cruelty doesn't serve a purpose. And there are people who are meant to work, you know, work and solve that problem. Or there are people who need to have that experience to grow. You, however, do not have to get rid of it. What your job is, is to focus on the art that you like and create more of it in the world. 
And I'm not saying that we just ignore bad situations and hope that they go away. I'm saying that we focus on the solutions to problems, but also in this big world, there are people on all different levels of vibrations. And to me, I think that's okay. And to me, I find, yeah, it's sad if someone is going through life as a drug addict. And if they're reaching out for help and I can help in some way, I certainly will. But I'm also going to be accepting of letting them have that choice. Because I believe life goes on and life is eternal. I still don't you know, in my opinion, sometimes I get into that thing of judging and saying they're wasting their life as a drug addict. And if you feel like me, when you have that thought, there's a great book called The Afterlife of Billy Fingers. And I will put a link in the show notes to that that might give you some thoughts on how everything is perfect, even when it doesn't look perfect. And the best thing for us to do is to focus on what ignites our passion and our joy. And if we see something in the world that doesn't ignite our passion and our joy, it doesn't necessarily make it bad. It just means it's not for us. And I mean, there's so much diversity in this world. Just focus on the paintings that you like and look at the other ones and say, ah, that one's not for me. I'm glad it's here for whoever needs it. And I'm just going to go back to the wing of the museum that has the kind of paintings that I like. So I hope that that is a helpful metaphor for you. It kind of spoke to me that I get to choose. And also over time, I have found that, you know, when I was younger, a lot of times I was just like, I don't get this. This is a waste. This is horrible or some, you know, some art was even offensive to me. And now I can see that even if I don't connect with it, that there is some beauty there. And I just get to, you know, look for that, the beauty in it and try to look at all the good angles in it. But you have a choice wherever you are. You can just look at it and say, oh, not for me, move on. Or you can just try to look for a few minutes of the beauty that for the beauty that's in something that's not necessarily for you. But ultimately, when we focus on what we connect with, what brings us joy, what brings us passion, then we're adding higher vibrations to our own life and to the collective vibration of the planet. And we're making good things happen. So (laughs) go out today, focus on the things that bring you joy, that you're passionate about, that you love, and you will make wonderful changes in the world just by being you, just by focusing and taking inspired action in the directions that your heart pulls you. So go out, create some magic today, enjoy the journey, and I will see you next time. Namaste and big hugs. Hey guys, the Magical Life Manifesting Club is temporarily closed to new members right now. I am revamping and revising and adding all sorts of sparkly new stuff, and it will be opening back up in May. But right now, I've got some fun freebies for you to play with while you're waiting for the club to open back up. You can get a free weekly manifesting planner and daily manifesting planner that you can use depending on what type you prefer. Also, there is a magical lunar planner, an angel assignment planner, money tracker to watch your money manifest and grow a daily love list PDF, and a revamp your vibe in five minutes e-kit. And all of these are available free on Daily Alchemy. So to get to them, you can either go to dailyalchemy.com and scroll down till you see the button that says freebies, and it will take you to the page where you can sign up to get these. Or you can also put dailyalchemy.com slash magical freebie vault. And there is a link in the show notes. So go on over and pick those up and let me know how they work for you. Namaste. Thanks for listening to the Adventures in Alchemy podcast. Connect with me on the dailyalchemy.com or Facebook at facebook.com slash Michelle Dobbins author. Join us next time for even more magical life tips.